Hello and welcome to Art with Anna. Today we are going to give a shout out to Mary Borgman for introducing me to this artist. Um, she is amazing. She is a Michigan native and actually inducted into the Michigan Women's Hall of Fame. Her name is Gwen Frostick. And that's who we'll be talking about today. Uh, before we get started, let's grab out our supplies and then we'll learn about the artist a little bit more and make some art. You will need a colored piece of paper, a dish, two colors of paint, and some leaves, branches, sticks, just some pieces of nature from outside. You'll also want a second piece of paper that will just be a scrap paper and then also a book or something heavy. All right, Gwen Frostick was actually born in Michigan, um, raised in Michigan. She was born and raised more in Southeast Michigan near the Detroit area, um, and she was born in 1906. She does have six siblings, and um, when she was born, everything was going well until she was about eight months old. She developed a severe fever, and then after that, she was left with a limp and very weak hands. Um, so she did have some disability, which, it adds to how incredible she was because um, the weak hands ended up not stopping her at all from making amazing art that really needs quite strong hands. So um, she is best known for her printmaking and specifically her block printmaking. Um, and she's also known for her, her block prints being naturalistic. So um, from nature, of branches and trees and animals, um, things that you would find outside. But when she was um, young, she actually studied mechanical art. So something very different from this naturalist art. She studied art that would help make machines. Um, I'm gonna grab some of the block printing that I have so you can kind of see some of the things she was making. So Gwen Frostick would do something called lino cuts and that's when you take a sheet of this stuff. It's called linoleum um, and it's pretty hard and you take really sharp tools and you scrape into it and whatever you don't scrape is left behind um, and then you put ink on it and you press it really 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 hard and that makes a print. So that's kind of art she made. Now what's incredible is this is very difficult to um, carve into. So the fact that she had some hand weakness is really incredible. Um, there's different ways to soften it, like heating it up, but even then it's really hard to carve into and then it's kind of too hot to touch. So um, very impressive, I think, of her. Now, she did some really cool things in her life. She did study art. Um, she ended up going to college for um, teaching. She did get a, her certificate for teaching. And then she went to Western Michigan University where she um, did start printmaking for the first time. And she actually quit early. She didn't actually graduate. Um, and she started her business. So let's take a look at some of her prints. They usually just use one or two colors. They're quite simple. Um, but you can see a lot of them are like natural designs. So that's what we are going to be making today. Um, my cat's meowing. I have to let her in. We'll be right. All right. Now that my cat's in here, I'd still be meowing. We are going to grab out our dish and put our two um, colors of paint in it. We want a decent amount of paint um, and we will be kind of spreading it out across the, the um, plate. So I've got that blue paint there. I think the other color I chose was this teal color. Just applying some paint on here. It's 
So we have our two paint colors. Now we need to take a look at the pieces of nature that we've grabbed and figure out a design that we want to make. And we have a few options. You can simply just make a print of the objects. So you could just make a print of some stick and some leaves, um, which is, is great. That would have been something that she would have done. So you'll just want to figure out how you want to arrange that on your piece of paper. Um, another ob option is you can make maybe some images out of the sticks and the leaves that you have. So for instance, I do still want to make an image of something of nature, but I was thinking, just get this stick, that this stick with these two leaves looks something like a bug. So I might try to make a dragonfly or something out of my um, sticks and leaves. And you should have a piece of paper of some options of how to make bugs or creatures out of um, sticks and leaves. So you can take a look at that and see if that's something you'd like to do. Otherwise we can just go straight from printing our, um, our leaves and sticks right on to our piece of paper. So figure out how you want to arrange that and then we'll get started. All right, so I have this stick, and I think I'm gonna put it into my teal color, and I'm just dipping it, so I get the whole stick, one side of it kind of covered in paint. And the next step is simply gonna be to just put place it right on my paper, right wherever I want. So I got my paper here, and I'm just gonna place it right there and we're just gonna keep it there now we're gonna repeat with any other piece of nature that we want to print onto our sheet of paper so now I'm gonna take my leaf um, and I'm dipping that just directly into my more blue colored paint Once I've got it covered, I'm gonna place that right next to my stick. I'm gonna try to make a dragonfly-like image. I guess worst case scenario will look like some sticks and some leaves. All right, so we are gonna put my leaf right down next to my stick. We're uh, making some art here. I did want to say something else that was kind of cool that happened um, in Gwen Prostick's life. <laughs> she um, she actually worked in metal for a long time until World War II came around where she needed to help by um, working. So she worked six days a week as a um, dye and cut um, draftsman. So she really um, used her art to help out during the war. So I thought that was that was pretty neat also. Alright, so I'm putting another leaf on. And then I'm going to try to add some sort of eye to my bug. And I do have these little, I don't know if you can see, but flower buds. So I'm going to stick those also in paint and stick those also onto my sheet of paper. All right, and another one for another eye. In. If you get too much paint, like too gloppy of paint onto your object, then you can just hit it on the plate a few times to get some extra paint off. stick to make my guy's tail longer and then we are just gonna press our book right on top 
um, you can put a scrap piece of paper in between though because we don't want to get the book dirty. Um, so we'll put a scrap piece of paper on top and we'll do some print, print, print making. We'll be our own little print press. All right, so Gwen Frostick used something called the Heidelman Press, which was a printing press that you could use to make newspapers or art. And it was this big, um, it's this big printing press, which means it's putting both your artwork and your, um, I'm sorry. putting both your artwork and the piece of paper through this really heavy kind of piece of metal and then that heavy piece of metal um, pushes them together and really imprints the um, the art that you have on the on the lino cut into your paper so we don't have one of those um, here but we are gonna use kind of a book to kind of press on top our two designs all right, so here's my design. I'm just gonna grab an extra sheet of paper or plastic or just something scrap to stick over it. And then we're gonna take a book and push it down. All right, here we go. All right, and then you're just gonna take it both hands and really press down. Use most of your body weight to really press on it. And then we'll get to reveal the design. sticks. And then leaves. I added some flowers on there that I'm just going to take off. And then some buggy eyes. And there we have it. We've got a little dragonfly and some flowers. So Gwen Frostick ended up living in this um, kind of cabin up north in Michigan. She sold a lot of her prints in Frankfurt, Michigan, um, which is kind of like a touristy town. But then she did move out um, further into the wilderness and was really inspired about or by the nature around her. So that's kind of um, how she got to making these types of prints. Now, something also amazing about her, she did make a lot of money doing this. She was very well um, respected. Um, she made some artwork for Henry Ford. So um, she had some money, but she lived extremely modestly and no one knew it until she passed in 2001, I think, at. She passed one day before her 95th birthday, and um, she donated $13 million to Western Michigan University, where she went to study art. So, um, she's just an incredible woman. I think her life is uh, just a very cool story. Um, as of a few years ago, last known, her nephew was running her um, printmaking business still. So, um, still in production today. But this is where we should <laughs> be. Here's our artwork. This is my little dragonfly with some flowers. Um, again, you are welcome to just print some leaves and sticks all over. That's totally fine too. But I hope you guys just had a little bit of fun. Um, it's fun that it's spring outside and we do have leaves and flowers to print right now. So I think that's good too. But I hope you guys enjoy your week. I will see you next week and um, that's it. Bye.